Okay, uh, it's six o'clock. Uh, I'll go ahead and get the call the meeting to order. Is all our board members out there? So I'll get a visual on you. I see three of them. I'm present. Present. I can't hear Mr. Woods. My phone's not working. They're not, so let me get you. Can you hear me out of this? Uh, I think you have to talk out of this one. So. Well, I'll try to talk real loud. Is that better? We'll work it out. Okay. Okay. Now, can you hear me better? Yeah, yeah I can oh, hear you yeah. now. Very much. Okay, good. <laughs> Y'all turn your hearing aids up. I, I'm not wearing mine. <laughs> okay, that's why you can't hear. <laughs> Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, we always begin our meeting with our moment of silence. So at this time, uh, please uh, uh, go in moment of silence with me and as you please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Change on the agenda here. Okay, C is to adopt the agenda. All board members have had a chance to review the agenda. Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda with no changes? I make the motion. Mr. McCrory makes the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Hurt. All in favor? I'm not seeing Connie for some reason. I'm here. And yes, okay. I'm in favor. Inside. Oh, okay. Yep. I'm, okay. I'm yes. Okay. Uh, two on the agenda is communications. Uh, 2A is recognitions. So today, Mr. Woods, we uh, take this opportunity to do the Garrett County Schools Whole Latte Love Teacher of the Month. And we'll be recognizing Miss Shiloh Stanley from Paint Lick Elementary. She's joining us. She's on the left hand side there, okay. waving at you. Miss Stanley is extremely dedicated to the successes of her students, to the Paint Lick School, and to our district as a whole. She works numerous hours, both day and night, to make sure she accomplishes what she needs to accomplish. This year, she brought in a brand new virtual learning platform that was designed for mod moderately and severe disability students and she's trained our MSD teachers across the district on that program. She's worked side by side with the Kentucky Autism Center for the last two years, and she's a behavior specialist. She teaches homebound students in addition to her other job with us. She schedules the MSD meetings for the district and is a great support to her colleagues. Her interactive virtual sessions have been so powerful that two of her students started their own community outreach for food and clothes to help others who are in need. I've had the great opportunity to sit in a couple of meetings with her. She comports herself in an incredibly professional manner, regardless of what's going on. And it's a real privilege and honor for us to be able to honor her tonight. Congratulations, Shallow. Thank you. Do you want to say something right now? Um, I just wanted to say thanks to you guys and um, all the administrators for being so supportive. I'm really grateful to work for Garrett County Schools. It's great. Do we have any? She just so the, all the recognitions tonight are happening offline. We've taken care of that, and we thank whole lot of love for the support that they give us and for the recognition that they'll give Miss Stanley. Okay. 
again, congratulations, and I know the board members will want to congratulate you as well. Can you hear me again? I'm going to take that off. Okay. Uh, number two is the uh, Erie County Farmers National Bank Students of the Month. So once again, we have a great opportunity here to recognize students for the work that they've done. Uh, we appreciate Farmers National Bank. And again, we they have collected their uh, support for them just like normal. And uh, we are having that delivered to them or they're picking it up, but they will definitely have it. So tonight we get to recognize five individuals. First, from Camp Dick Robinson, Camden Irvin, a fifth grader, the daughter of Cliff Head and Melissa Irvin. She's been working extremely hard on her imagined learning and her virtual pathway. She's completed so many math lessons that she's had to be oh, she's had to be moved up to the next grade level during this process. She's also had perfect attendance for every virtual session, always volunteers to answer questions and to share ideas. So congratulations to Camden on being recognized tonight as the CDR student of the month. Is she up there? Are you there with us, Camden? She just messaged that her microphone is not working, but she I thanked us for the award. I see her waving at us down there. So oh, see her right there? I see her. Yeah. 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 So congratulations. Guys, she may not be able to hear, but sometimes uh, when I worked at the school for the deaf, one of the ways that they applauded was just to put their hands in the air and shake them back and forth. And so it's a kind of neat way for them to be able to see that. <laughs> congratulations, Camden. Our next recognition is for Lancaster Elementary School. Levi Metcalf, third grader, son of James and Ashley Metcalf. Levi's been doing a great job participating virtually. He's making straight A's during this past nine weeks. He's a great help in the classroom also. Ms. Bottoms loves the fact that when he gets out of the car in the morning, he's always saying good morning to the adults who are outside. He's full of energy and he's one of those students who makes you smile when you see him. So congratulations to Levi on being recognized as student of the month. Congratulations, Levi. Congratulations. Where is Levi? Congratulations, Levi. <laughs> Good job. Our third recognition tonight is from Paint Lick Elementary. Anna Anderson, the third grade student, daughter of Michael and Vonda Anderson. Anna has the best can-do attitude. She never lets a challenge intimidate and is always willing to try new things to learn. She's always in small groups and tries her hardest every single day. When we were in person, Anna always made sure that all the chairs were put up at the end of the day and she's always willing to lend a hand to help anyone else who is in need. So congratulations to Anna Anderson. Congratulations, Anna. I see you. Thank you. All righty. I hear you, too. <laughs> Very good. So she's Garrett Middle. No, she's so Garrett Middle School representative, seventh grader. Gabriel Doolin, the son of Bobby and Andrea Doolin. Gabriel works above and beyond what any teacher could ask for. He enjoys working ahead and does extra practice to help himself understand the concepts. He's always eager to answer uh, with the right answer, and he's a great peer to his classmates. He always knows how to brighten someone's day. So congratulations to Gabriel. Thank you very much. Gabriel, good to see you. Congratulations. Okay, I see there you. There he is. <laughs> And our last recognition tonight is from Garrett County High School, 10th grade Ashlyn Ellis, the daughter of Doug and Tammy Ellis. She recently suffered uh, from a concussion, but she stayed on top of all her geometry work with a smile. She's truly appreciated for the dedication and perseverance that she has exhibited when things have become difficult. So congratulations on her recognition tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I see her. Yes. Congratulations. So, sorry that we couldn't have them here tonight, but uh, we certainly wanted to make uh, the opportunity to recognize them and continue that process. Again, thank you to Farmers National Bank and thank you to the students and their parents for joining us tonight. Thank you, Mr. Stahl. Any board members who want to make a comment on any of our students that we were recognized there? Okay. Thank you. So we'll go to the next part of the agenda. B is the site-based uh, decision-making minutes. Uh, you'll see five schools uh, listed there. 
think this might be the first, but we have them all in there. That's good. Two months in a row, I believe. Two months in a row. Uh, any comments, board, audience, principals? Uh, C is the audience comments. We had no requests, Mr. No requests for the audience. All right, board members. No comments. I might say something if you don't mind. Okay, Mr. Hurd. Uh, with everything that's going on, I certainly appreciate uh, all the leadership that's uh, taking place out there and all those people who are stepping up uh, from all areas of life in order to do the very best they can for the Gary County uh, teachers, students, and community. Uh, that's to everything, for, you know, just everyone. Everybody that's included in that is a part of uh, trying to make Gary County just such a great place as it is today. And thank everybody. Thank you. Okay, uh, E is superintendent. So we have no new hires this month, so nothing to share with you there. And as we shared on Monday, there was only one resignation. Uh, the thing that might take a little bit longer today is we want to share with you a needs assessment that we have put together. Uh, we've done this needs assessment uh, as part of uh, complying with board policy 04.1 AP1 which requires a summary report from a district, district level needs assessment that's been completed by us and is being shared with you. Uh, we met with each of our um, uh, school leadership teams and asked them to address areas of instructional program, student support services, major equipment, major maintenance. Uh, we also met with our maintenance crew and we met with our IT staff to make sure that we could pull together this for you and comply uh, as best we can with what we need to provide with you. This is not a budget meeting. This is simply a needs assessment to share this information so that you can use that when we arrive, arrive at the point of thinking about budgeting. Oops, a little too fast there, sorry. So the first thing we'll share with you tonight is student data. Uh, as of right now, we have an enrollment of roughly 24,000, or 24,000, that'd be something, wouldn't it? 2,450 students. Uh, when we were still running uh, attendance with ADA, we were at about 95%, uh, but KDE, KDE has moved us to participation, and KDE runs a participation report uh, as they see fit, when they see fit. So the first one and the only one that they've run at this point was July to September and we were at 96.36% of participation at that point. This year we've had two dropouts, and if you look at the breakout of in-person versus virtual, if we were at in-person, we'd be at 68.7%, and then you can see under that each of the schools and how that breaks out, uh, and it follows a sequence there, uh, more in-person for our elementary, uh, and then as it uh, moves up, we decline a little bit with that. Uh, we'll certainly be looking at that again as we move forward and to see if that changes. So if there's any questions around the student data, happy to take that. So as we put together this needs assessment, we tried to break it out as we asked the, the building principals to do that. So the area of instructional program, we've broken it out into three areas. And one of the things based on the, the feedback that we got uh, from them is we want to take a look at how we can improve our instructional program with curriculum that's an EL, uh, ELA uh, curriculum and a math curriculum that's district wide. And we've shown you a couple of configurations there. Uh, if we found a program that was solid K2 and then we needed to work 3-8, we could do that. Also, if we see a solid program K5 through 6-8, we're not proposing a program if we were to propose a program that would be based on feedback that we have from each of the, the buildings including the teachers to make sure that this was not a top-down type of decision it was a decision that incorporated the, the, the insight that our teachers can bring to us and our building level uh, administrators can bring to us in the area of instructional program and instruction we need to look at the areas uh, in all four of our main uh, uh, contents in the areas of mapping and in science and social studies, making sure that we're supporting the new standards that are out there. In ELA, it's writing, reading, and making sure we have the appropriate resources. Uh, that could be new materials, and so we'll uh, review that and bring that to you at a budgeting time. And in math, it will be increasing our focus and our resources, 
and also working in the area of teacher efficacy to make sure we're supporting our teachers to give the most solid math instruction that we possibly can. The area of assessment, uh, we feel like there's a need to make sure we've aligned all of our assessments with our curriculum. No need to try to assess something that we're not teaching or teach something that we're not assessing. We need to have a quality control to that. And we are going to consider going back and looking at what common assessments would look like if we develop a consistent program across all three of our schools. Uh, that common assessment, though, we need to develop in such a fashion that it doesn't put an additional burden on our teachers. It needs to be something that they could easily access as part of their daily routine and that we could gather that feedback for them and share that with them on a reoccurring basis. These are all things that we feel like are needs. It's not uh, us proposing something as a solution today. We just want to make sure it's on your radar. You'll notice that there are no dollars, dollar amounts with that. That's because, again, we haven't selected any kind of programming. And we don't want to bring a number to you until we have something for you to consider. Another area of instructional programming, programming that came up in our conversation was the possibility of perhaps needing to do a more intensive summer program as an intervention program as we come out of the world of COVID. Uh, so we've taken a look at that and we want to set aside some areas for personnel and materials uh, and the potential of having five different programs in each of our schools could run us somewhere in the area of $75,000. Uh, we don't, uh, we're not again proposing how we would manage that simply saying that that's something that needs to be on our radar as we're coming out of the area of what COVID has looked like. In the area of student support, we have now working for us Mountain Comp Care and we need to uh, work to up our utilization of that because it's a zero cost to us. Uh, we are utilizing them, but it's a unique way to try to use them in a year where we do not have students in the building at the level that we want but there have been a number of referrals to them and we want to continue to take advantage of that. One of the areas that could be a problem in student support that we'll have to consider is that Gear Up will be shifting out of Garrett Middle School and they've been able to provide supports around the areas of counseling. And we may need to look at how we fill that gap at the middle school. We also have an increasing number of Ukrainian students and that uh, generates a unique uh, uh, communications need. So one of the things that we've looked at there as a possibility is increasing our support for them uh, by potentially developing a uh, contractual agreement with one of the members of that community to help serve as an interpreter for us and help us understand that community and how to best uh, support those students. And then a request was made for literacy footprints, digital license K3, and that would run about $15,000 if we went that route. So if you looked at all of these things, that would total out to close to $80,000. And again, not a, not a request, just an indication of what a potential need assessment could, could lead to. In the area of major equipment, many of our buildings have currently uh, smart boards in them and replacing smart boards with a smart board is not the best idea at this time. So each of our schools requested uh, the, uh, us supporting them in the area of interactive panels. And each of those panels is about $1,800. And if we were to do, to do that at a district-wide uh, uh, rollout to cover all areas, that's about a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, so uh, when we come back at the budgeting time, uh, you won't see us making that kind of request. There would have to be uh, a process of rolling it out based on need initially and eventually being able to cover the district in a, in a productive way. We've learned this year that one of the things we probably will need to look at doing is creating a third entry point for Chromebooks, and that would be at third grade. The $165,000 that you see listed there is not a new cost. Uh, the cost for that would be about $110,000 without that third grade entry point. So it would be adding another $55,000 to do that. One of the things that we learned this year was that uh, you can't have too many of them when you end up in a world of virtual. Uh, and so that's a possibility. If we did that, we would eventually be able to go one-to-one -one with everyone uh, in our district, even if they weren't uh, uh, Chromebooks that were going home, if they were being utilized in the classroom for small group instruction, things of that nature. A high school has a marquee that's not operational. And if we were to make it operational, that's a $50,000 cost, unless we looked at a different way of doing that. We have a couple of schools, CDR and LES, that are in need of elementary cafeteria tables and to, to meet their need would be, uh, we're a little high at 57,000, but uh, that gives you a good idea. 
and we have two servers that we need to replace uh, or four servers that we need to replace. Chris has a plan for us to do that on a two year cycle. And I've listed there that it's cats money. So that would not be money that would come out of you know, any kind of general fund. We just wanted to make you aware that that's part of a major equipment, but there is an avenue for that one. In the area of major maintenance, GCHS, CDR, and PLES are in need of pressure wash, tuck, and seal. GCS is, uh, GCHS is in need of uh, a buzzer on the bus entry side, as well as a wash of the roof and sidewalk and the stucco. LES is in need of floor tile and baseboards, and CDR and HVAC loop flush and stucco wash and an office free key. Some of those things we can take care of without it being a major issue for you guys, but I wanted to make sure that you saw what that was. Next, in major projects, it would not be part of a general fund, but would have to come out of uh, some type of a BG, BG process, would be work on the GMS sidewalks, curbs, asphalt, canopy, the front area, and the windows that exist there. That asphalt could uh, move all the way across the ATC and the GEC. We need an office redesign, potentially at GCHS. And we would need to be looking at that as a safety measure. So that's a conversation that we need to consider having. LES is in need of window replacements, including the front glass that's uh, in the front of the building. Paint Lick and CDR are in need of replacements for their uh, systems that uh, frequently get us in trouble uh, when we can't take care of the, the waste waters that we have there. Uh, we don't know what that solution looks like, but it's something we need to be looking into. All three of our elementaries are in need of a, a gym floor refinish that's more than a superficial one, it's a full, uh, full sanding. We need a safety entrance here at the GEC building. ATC is in need of a roof replacement and maintenance would like to see a purchase of a bobcat, a truck, plow and snow blowers. Uh, so you can see that there's a large number of projects that could come into play at some point in time. Now, having said all of that, let's look at what that means in the world of finances. Uh, the last thing we want to do is suggest to you that that list we just created is something that we can respond to and just say, let's take care of all of that. You currently have a contingency fund of $3.2 million. Our salaries run slightly over $14 million a year, and that's salary that we're going to have to continue to pay. Our general operating is revised this year to about $3,091,000. And when you look at all of our anticipated expenses, if we roll this budget forward completely, not assuming any loss, not assuming any increase, we would have available $96,000 to look at what we're talking about. If you roll that forward and assume that we have step increases and rank increases in salaries, that money could all be absorbed by that. So our responsibility will be to come to you with a fiscally sound budget that looks at all the options that might be available to answer as many of those questions as we possibly could, what that would look like in the long term, how we would uh, structure a rollout of any of the items that needed to be spread over more than one year. Uh, and at that point, uh, we would trust you all to help us work through what we can do and what we can't do. So again, this is to meet the area of a needs assessment, report to you all so that it's available when it comes time to do budgeting. And we'll start talking budgeting with you in the next meeting in January. So I'll stop there. That's a lengthy report from me and I apologize for the length of that, but happy to take any questions that you might have at this time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Stowe. Uh, board members, do you have questions or comments on the report from our superintendent? If not, uh, my comment is very good. This is a, a long time coming for our board here to see a big assessment presented in the way that she presented it. Uh, very, very thorough, uh, understandable, and a good conclusion. That here's your money, here's what you're looking at, and where will it go next year? That's, that's the way it's supposed to work. So appreciate that. Uh, other comments? I would just like to say that uh, I really appreciate the structure and organization of this and it makes it very easy for us to see uh, where the needs are at in the district and uh, 
I look forward to being a part of those discussions to try to find a solution to meet some of those needs. So um, I just appreciate seeing it in this way. Very good. Thank you. Others? Okay. If not, we'll move over to uh, well, reports. reports uh, uh, Treasurer's report. So you all saw the Treasurer's report on Monday. If you have any questions, Stacy is on with us and happy to answer that. Uh, if not, we won't uh, spend any more time on there, but I'll, I'll pause long enough to see if there were any questions. Okay. As we shared with you on Monday night as well, we're adding a new report for you, and that is from our fiscal agent, Baird. They are going to provide you on a monthly basis an update on what your bonding capacity is. So I have that on the screen for you. Uh, you are able to see two reports there. Uh, over the course of time, we'll continue to add to that, and that'll help you stay up, up to speed on what those numbers will look like as we move forward. You receive bills each month, and as part of our process, we have to place those on the uh, main agenda. So minus any questions that you have there, we'll simply use that as a report in that fashion. Mr. Woods requested two other reports. Uh, from us, uh, and we're fortunate to be able to offer those to you today. Uh, one of those is the area of ROTC, which is a new program for us. Brett Meadows is with us today. He's going to walk us through, give you some insight on the ROTC program. Mr. Meadows, the only question I have for you is, are you going to run your presentation, or do you want me to run it for you? Uh, you can run it, sir. That's fine. Okay. I will pop it up, and we will follow right along with you. Thank you. Hopefully you can see it, and if you if you can see it, we're ready anytime you are. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Okay. Um, first off, obviously, uh, thanks for letting me uh, present to the board. I understand this was quite an undertaking for the board, so uh, I want to start off with just some demographics where we're at and some pros and cons, really. So, looking at the numbers right now, um, with the Army kind of getting late, uh, late start, late contract. Uh, our numbers right now, we're looking at 51 total students, and that's been plus or minus two or three uh, from the 12 weeks. But we have 27 freshmen, nine sophomore, uh, four juniors, and 11 seniors. So uh, for an inaugural year and a late start, a lot of kids already had their schedule started. I think that is some actually um, pretty good numbers, uh, almost at 10, 11 percent of the school. So uh, not bad. Uh, if you could go on, sir. Just to tell you the, the demographics by gender, uh, this is a lot of people think 98% of the kids taking JROTC are male. If you look at it, right now we have 31 male students and 20 female. So really about a 60 40 breakdown, um, which is actually pretty good. Um, most people, like I said, I think it's kind of a male dominated uh, coursework, but pretty good numbers, almost a 50 50. So. And for those of you that, that don't get around uh, to, to the GEC, um, I just want to kind of display that the, the amount of effort that not just me, but other people have put into our facilities. A uh, little shout out to Mr. Gresham, right? But, uh, you know, our classroom where I'm teaching from right now is on the right. Our supply room is on the left. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have, you know, hundreds of uniforms. Our kids have got uh, uniforms issues. We have boots, you know air rifles, everything for when the kids get here, right? It's ready for them. Um, we also ordered t-shirts uh, so they can wear around the school. Go ahead. Just to kind of give you a perspective, a few weeks ago when we actually were able to have in-person uh, class and, and coursework, um, the kids, you know, this is kind of them in their uniform, t-shirts kind of thing. Uh, we only got to wear them a couple of times. We only wear them about once every two weeks with the, with the current uh, uh, coursework. As they get upperclassmen, they'll wear dress uniforms. But right now, uh, just to kind of give you a little view of, of what's going on. I do want to highlight two things. <clears throat> um, even though we've only been here a couple months, uh, Robert Link, he's a, a captain in our program, a cadet captain, but he signed a uh, contract with the United States Navy for active duty. He got a $10,000 bonus. Uh, Major Pennington, Wesley Pennington, is a senior soccer player. Uh, he signed with the the National Guard about two weeks ago. He got a $20,000 bonus and we're working a scholarship for him to go to Moorhead. He would probably be the one of the first 
uh, scholarship recipients uh, from Garrett County that I know of. Um, but that would literally, to sign a minute man, would pay for his entire college, his board, room and board, tuition, and so forth. So more to follow, hopefully, over the, the next year or two. But those are the first two uh, for me personally. I just want to highlight one thing. You know, COVID-19 has been, you know, obviously very detrimental to the, to the program, uh, to the school system as a whole. There is some positives. We do have 51 kids. I think that's phenomenal. We do have our uniforms. Our facilities are set. We have T-shirts that were bought and paid for uh, by a local uh, contractor. Um, you know, virtual learning is still positive in my classroom rooms. The Kentucky National Guard has come out and done some guest speakings over the Internet. And they even talked to some kids and their parents. Uh, we do have gym space allocated, and we're going to start working on that over Christmas break to allocate a gym here in, in the actually a, a fitness room uh, at the GEC. We have an established chain of command. Our kids are actually doing the same thing the school board's doing. They're doing uh, with, you know, cadets in a uh, uh, basically a subordinate um, role. The negatives, obviously, we haven't been able to do physical training. The color guard practice has been negated through COVID-19. The Raider team has not been established. And we haven't uh, established a rifle team. Um, we haven't got to do the community outreach like I'd like to do. Um, we have some partnerships that are pending. Uh, we're just waiting for the restrictions to be lifted. And then obviously um, the lack of visibility um, because we're not in school and the kids aren't participating. They're not doing color guard or whatever. Uh, things that promote the program has obviously been uh, somewhat hindered. But uh, I mean, morale is good. Um, I have a good basically four of cadets. And other than that, obviously, just pending your questions. Okay. Uh, we'll head Would you have any questions? Here in the back no question. Anybody? I thought I heard somebody getting ready to time. Well, no question. Well, I, I, I was going to ask a question. Sure. <clears throat> going to ask if um, one of the you talked about the physical training would does, does does JROTC fit the model that we had for athletics to do physical training when they could or was JROTC not a part of that model that we use for athletic conditioning and training we uh, miss lamb we actually uh, for probably all the time period that we were actually in person in school or had the opportunity, we were doing um, after school and extracurricular activities. Um, the numbers really, um, it's pretty, pretty difficult if you're not in school for some of the kids out in the county to get their parents to take them to school for this and take them back. Um, okay. So, I mean, we did have at times we'd have 15 kids here and then sometimes we'd have three. Um, but a lot of the things we learn in class and then we translate it to extracurricular activities, especially like the physical training, Raider team, that kind of stuff. It's just, it hasn't done well. And I can't do PT for kids in the gym and then have kids at home kind of watching. It's just, they would be sitting there really doing nothing. So it's been an obstacle and I've talked to other cadre and they're kind of doing it the same way. I'm taking the advice of some other people, but right now pretty much everything in Kentucky is kind of on hold, man. Yeah. Well, I still am. I feel really impressed by just what you've showed us tonight. So thank you for the report. And I, I'm still so grateful that we have the, the JROTC in our district. I think it's a great asset to us and a, an opportunity for our kids. And COVID-19 will eventually resolve and we'll get back to doing things the way we want to do them. Um, so I'm still very grateful that, that you're here and you're, you're leading it as best you can. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate the, the opportunity to talk to the board. It's uh, it's quite an honor. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mr. Woods, if you don't mind me saying just for a second, I'd like to brag on uh, Mr. Meadows. He, uh, just getting a chance to see him firsthand. He is a rock star. I mean, he has handled all of this, uh, starting the program, handling the adversity of COVID. And the kids, they love coming to his classroom. And so I, I can't imagine the amount of kids that we're going to have uh, once we get past COVID. Uh, but uh, Mr. Meadows has handled it awesome. He is fantastic. And we are so fortunate to have him running this program at Gary County. Yeah, and uh, in spite of the negatives that you listed, 
Yeah. I'm very really impressed <laughs> with, with what's been going on. Well, thank you, sir. Keep up the good work. All right. Thank this, you, this prompts, a, this prompts a question for me, and you talk about uh, not being able to get kids in because of location, et cetera. Uh, Mr. Stoll, you might uh, make me uh, up to date. Used to, uh, we used to have shuttle buses that would uh, take kids uh, uh, home in the afternoons and uh, after some type of extracurricular activity. Do we still even run shuttle buses? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, I, I can imagine that you couldn't. Um, the uh, We have not been running an after-school thing, and I believe this the situation that we're dealing with here would be more of trying to bring them in during the day if we were trying to do something of that nature. Uh, during uh, the, the COVID experience of being virtual. Uh, we have not run, to my knowledge, any uh, after school activity buses. I believe that's what uh, they were called when I was here um, uh, previously. Uh, if that's something we have to go back and look at doing, we certainly can. But uh, we have continued to run buses to bring students in uh, during the virtual time. And if there's a way we can support uh, JROTC, we're happy to do that. I think it'd be something worth looking at uh, because the obviously the more increased participation and the more opportunities we give our kids to to be active, the better off I think everybody will be. Oh, Mr. Mendes, is there a fellow teacher with you? Yet, you know, there's there's not. Okay, I just want to make sure that uh, we are going to. Reach our estimated goal of 70, was it 70 students? That I know you feel like the excitement's there. I feel like it's there too. I just want to make sure if we get COVID over, uh, we can move right on up. Yeah, Mr. Woods, I think one of the, one of the issues was getting the Army, uh, which is like a bureaucratic machine, to come and fill the contracts out because really, I, I'm pretty sure Mr. Anderson uh, and he can correct me, but I think it was only like 10 to 12 days before really school started that the contracts were really locked in. And a lot of kids, their schedules were already uh, taken. So a lot of the kids who were in our program had to physically come in that week and drop a class to add our class. So um, and then we didn't have the outreach to, to go out to eighth grade like we're going to do this year and talk to the kids and before the schedules are set. And uh, I think that's going to help push the numbers over very easily, to be honest with you. And Mr. Woods, this is Michael, just to add to that, uh, sure. Mr. Meadows is doing a great job. Um, one of the things that the, the guy talked about his, uh, was uh, the personality, but he has a great personality. Uh, the excitement when those kids first wore those uniforms to school, uh, I just think I don't think we'll have any problem. Uh, I think we're going to have a bigger problem of reducing the numbers than we are of uh, just the excitement from the kids and the talk and so many kids came up to me when the uniforms first came as where's those kids get those and how do we get in that class? So I just want to say that uh, Mr. Meadows has done a great job and uh, the excitement and I, I appreciate you all allowing the school to have this. Very good. Yes, yeah, so this board has been wanting this program for I know eight years that I know of. And so we're excited that we have our OTC in our pro in our in our high school at this time. And I know our community will, it will really be involved with this once COVID and we can all get back to normal again. Mm -hmm. So great job, Mr. Meadows. And that's what we wanted to hear a report like this. Thank you, sir. Our next report, um, Mr. Woods is in the area of gifted and talented. Uh, and we've asked Ms. Emily Lawson, uh, who works directly with our students, if she would provide a, uh, an update on that. And I believe, Ms. Lawson, you correct me if I'm wrong, you're going to take control and do the presentation uh, for yourself. Is that correct? I don't think she hears you. Ms. Lawson, you, there, you have your Lawson? microphone. Um, no, thank her microphone's on. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? We can now. Are you going to do the yeah. presentation? I'll stop presenting if you are. Is that correct? Hmm. I 
heard her and she heard us for a moment. Yeah, we're having a hard time picking her up. I'm here. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm stopping presenting and you can take that if you'd like. I think her screen froze up. Yeah, it's fading in and out, I think. Okay. So as we all know, the one technology is when it worked, it's great, and when it doesn't, it just frustrates you to no end. So. <laughs> I think this is what might be called streaming in reverse. Hey, can you see me now? We can see you and we can hear you. It's just not a great stream right now. It's not working. Uh -huh. oh, okay. It's, it's not allowing me to present um, my screen. So, okay, if you're okay, then I'll just pull it up and present for you. Is that all right? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. We're getting there. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right. Are you with us, Miss Lawson? I think she's having some connection issues. Miss Lawson, could you come to your door for a second? I see the presentation. Um, so, Here, see if you can use this. Sure. Uh, mute that one. Sure. Okay. okay, so I just wanted to share with you all some of the things that we've been doing in our Gifted and Talented class this year. Um, so while the students have been, while well, we've been doing digital work, um, they've been working on some individual research projects through Renzuli Learning. Um, and with that, I've had some really neat projects turned in. Um, they each chose something that interested them to research and then they got to choose how they wanted to present their information that they learned um, so i've had kids create comic books uh, some of them have done a slideshow presentation they've done skits an essay i mean i even had one student who built a working trebuchet which was really neat um, i've also been meeting with the groups of students on google meet and while we meet together um, we work on some collaborative activities and critical thinking exercises um, I also check in with them and then we discuss or we have discussed the progress on the research projects. Um, they've also been able to work on some 3D design projects through Tinkercad and then when they finish their design, um, they're able to send it to me where I can print it here with our 3D printers. Um, when I had the students in person, when they come to me, uh, we do breakout boxes. Uh, we got some new Lego robotics kits this year, which has been really neat. So they can build the robots with the Legos and they have different sensors. Um, and then they code, they write the code for the robot that makes it work uh, how they designed it. Hmm. Uh, we've completed some lessons, some beginning lessons on 3D design and using Tinkercad. Uh, we do team building activities and they've been using the Sphero Bolt robots, which are also coding robots. And then this is uh, one of my sixth grade students. This is just an example of one of the research projects they've created. So it's about a three minute video. So I thought I would play that so you all could see it. Hi, today I will be sharing my presentation on fractals. Um, the reason I decided on this topic for my project is because I've researched fractals in the past and have learned about them and they really interest me. So the steps I took to make this are I researched on some different websites about all the different types of fractals, the different fractals, the history of fractals, and who was associated with fractals. So now I'll share my presentation. All About Fractals by Parker Willems. 
This introduction, this following presentation will explain what fractals are and how they are used in society. For most of this presentation, I will be referring to the Mandelbrot set for most examples of fractals. The Mandelbrot set. Fractals are shapes. What are fractals? Fractals are shapes that never end. They keep repeating forever. Look at it this way. Suppose someone gave you infinite cars to line up, but you had to use them all. The only way to do this would be to build a fractal. If you look at a fractal, you may think you see the end of it. But if you zoom in on it, you'll see it never does end. Stravinsky Triangle. The Mandelbrot set. The Mandelbrot set is a fractal discovered by Benoit Mandelbrot. To me, it kind of resembles a sound wave. If you keep zooming in on it, you'll see it keeps repeating itself. Mandelbrot set. The Stravinsky Triangle. The Stravinsky Triangle is basically a triangle inside of a triangle forever. It resembles a stack of triangle blocks. It was discovered by Walcott Stravinsky. Also, if you keep zooming in on it, there will always be more triangles. The Sierpinski Triangle. Koch Snowflake. The Koch Snowflake was one of the earliest discovered fractals. It was first found by Niels Fabian von Koch. It looks exactly like what it is called, a snowflake. If you zoom in on it, it will always repeat its shape. Koch Snowflake. History of Fractal Research. In 1975, Benoit Mandelbrot discovered some never-ending shapes. He decided to call these fractals after the Latin word fractus, meaning broken. Many mathematicians after Mandelbrot discovered more fractals like Walcott, Sarbinsky, and Niels Fabian Hels von Koch, Benoit Mandelbrot. Fractals in video games. Most video game textures are fractals. For instance, in Super Mario 64, most of the land and characters are fractals. Each component of the game is made up of millions of pixels, which never end. Super Mario 64. Fractals in nature. Fractals are all over nature. Some leaves are fractals along with shells, lightning bolts, flowers, and even spirals of galaxies. You've probably seen dozens of fractals and not even realized it. Conclusion. In conclusion, fractals are important parts of society and nature. They are everywhere and you don't even see them. Thank you for taking the time to read my presentation. I really enjoyed researching all the different types of fractals for this and who discovered them and when they were discovered. They have such a rich history, and I really enjoyed looking at it. I learned so much while researching this project. I didn't even know about the Koch snowflake mentioned in my presentation. I was so interested by all the different people included in um, the fractals and how, like, we don't really, we, no one really appreciates them because not a lot of people know about fractals. Thank you for listening to my video about my presentation on fractals. Bye. <laughs> okay, and then I've got some pictures you can see here. Um, some of our students, when they were able to come here, um, that's them building and coding the robots. And then uh, there's some students working on a breakout box and using the Sphero Bolt robots. They're the little round things on the floor. <laughs> um, there's some students learning 3D design in Tinkercad and then more with the Lego robots. They really like the Legos. Uh, these are just some uh, prints that the students have designed and then sent to me to be printed. So these are they're going through the introductory lessons with Tinkercad. So we're doing some basic stuff and each lesson will build upon the one before it. And then as far as a testing update goes, um, I feel like it's gone really well so far. Um, all in-person students at CDR have taken the Naglieri and the Iowa Science and Social Studies assessments. Um, all of our in-person students at LES have taken the Iowa Science and Social Studies. And then when we return to in-person instruction, they will take the Naglieri. Um, and then at Paintlick, all of the in-person students have taken the Naglieri and when we return to in-person, they'll be able to take the science and social studies assessment. Um, all of our virtual students at all three elementary schools uh, were given the opportunity to be tested. And I did have some from each school come in to be tested. Uh, and then all the assessments given so far have been scored. And the next step in the process is to work with the parents and the teachers to gather two more pieces of evidence and that will complete the identification. So, thank you. Uh, do we have any questions? 
I, I do have one question on that last part uh, on the testing, which is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, what percentage would you say of our gifted and talented students have been tested? Um, of our fourth graders? Of, of, of all of our gifted. Uh, I would say about 60% of the fourth grade has been tested right now. Okay. What about uh, the remaining students? I mean, I would, I was talking like all of the gifted and talented, 50%, 40%, 70%, not just fourth grade. I just wondered about the testing for all of our gifted and talented. Um, are you are you talking about like the math and reading when we look at the iReady assessments? I was just talking about general testing procedures that we do in a normal year. How close are we being, are we now to being complete in our testing? I don't think I understand what you're asking. I'm sorry, uh, but well, we're, well, we're constantly looking at the iReady scores, uh, looking for qualifying scores, if that's what you're asking. Um, and I'm waiting for the second round of iReady to be um, administered because we want to see that 96 percentile more than one time. So we've taken it once. So I'm waiting for it again. So basically what I'm seeing, and I may not understand exactly how that testing process goes, but basically you're saying you've got a, about what, 50 to 60% of the fourth grade? Complete, is, yes. Is the fourth grade the only thing, only gifted and talented students to get tested? Uh, that's where we do our initial screening. Uh, the screening is constant throughout that, but we don't do like uh, screening of the whole grade level after fourth grade. So we'll have referrals or we look at their iReady scores as we're constantly looking for more students. But as far as like a screening, we do that in the fourth grade. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? Not a question, but I never heard of fractals and now I hope I can quit thinking about them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I was right there with you, uh, Jerry. Thinking, okay, never heard of a fractal before. I'm ready to learn oh, something. I'm going to sleep tonight. Yeah, and uh, uh, Emily, those breakout boxes. Um, I have a uh, taught a senior nursing course at, at Berea. <laughs> we used breakout boxes to learn the national patient safety goals this semester. So breakout boxes all across uh, from fourth grade to seniors in college. So. Pretty good way of teaching students how to think critically. Great job. Great. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for having me. Ms. Lawson, do we have, are we expanding our gifted program to visuals, um, expressions, and so forth? I'm, this is all academic, correct? Uh, no, we also identify music, dance, drama, uh, visual arts, leadership. Yes. So that's on a, um, I would need to receive referrals for that. And then we would go through the process of uh, looking at the portfolio or the auditions um, and would do the identification that way. If we had that, just kind of give us a scenario. If you had a visual student referred, mm -hmm. uh, how would you serve that person? Would you, would it be part of your, pull? are you pull out? You're pull out, yeah. right? Yes. How would you I, just uh, a visual arts student would be right up my alley. Um, I'm yeah. certified to teach visual arts, so I would pull them in for me. But we would also find them, um, you know, other ways to be serviced through maybe, I don't know if they offer advanced art classes or art club, and uh, we could take them on field trips. And there's different ways that we can service those students. Very good. Okay, thank you very much uh, for all this. Uh, report i know the the assessment has changed over the years I, I see that through the different testing so okay let's go on thank you again Ms. your next item is consent agenda okay uh, four is the consent agenda we have uh through the minutes of the previous meetings uh, on november 16th november 19th and then we have approved the Treasury report on the consent agenda. 
Uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I so move. Okay, next motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Hurt. Further discussion? All in favor? All were in favor? Action agenda A is to approve the board attorney for 2021. So you all have received the uh, responses to the RFP and the summary breakdown that we've provided. Uh, hope you've had an opportunity to look at all of those. Uh, from my perspective, my recommendation to you would be that you select and approve Grant Chenoweth to serve as the board attorney based on the information we received from the RFP. Okay, our superintendent makes a recommendation that we um, uh, Grant Chenoweth as our board attorney for 2021. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Make the motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. Mr. Hurt makes the second. Further discussion? All in favor? All word in favor. B is to approve the revised BG1 for energy savings projects, Mr. Stahl. So this is a, a return back to uh, an item from 2017. Uh, and after uh, looking at this, there was a revision that needed to be made. It's not a financial change at all. We just need you to approve that. We'll sign it and forward it to KDE and should be able to close the project out at that point, I believe. So I would recommend that you approve this revised BG1 on the energy savings project. Okay. We have a motion to uh, approve the BG1 for the energy saving pro savings project. So, so Mr. McQuarrie, who's first? Or Brother Jerry? I'm not sure. All right, Mr. McQuarrie makes the motion. Do, and do I have a second, Brother Jerry? Yeah, I'll second. Other discussion? All in favor? All were in favor? Okay, C is to approve the revised BG1 for the Garrett Middle School door project. This is the one that we've uh, shared with you. We'll be able to add some additional funds from the state to add to the interior doors instead of just the exterior. And we're able to tap on, tap into the existing BG1 by doing a revision of that. So I would recommend that you approve this revised BG1 for the GMS door project. And what's the additional cost? Uh, $67,000, I think. Let me put that in the motion. Then so whatever, I don't remember. I think I can pull it. Didn't we have grant money of 61000 for that? It was actually about 70 some thousand dollars that we received in the grant. And I'm trying to look for the number on here. I may have to go pull it from the old one. Stacy, you don't know off the top of your head, do you? The school, the school security fund was sixty nine thousand nine hundred and ninety dollars, and I think I, I've tried to remember. I thought the cost would pretty much be covered by that money, wasn't it? It is covered. It is. There's no cost to you. I'm not finding the number. It was less than the full security fund of sixty nine nine. If you want to hold it, we can. No, no. No, I tell you what we're gonna do. We're just gonna ask. We're gonna put uh, approve the BG five roof project. Uh, That's the BG one. BG one. I'm sorry, BG one. I'm yeah. Here. Uh, door project at over sixty thousand, sixty thousand plus. How's that? So that would kind of give us an idea in the in the minutes that we're, you know, we're, we're, how we're gonna cover that. Do I have a motion to do that? So moved. Dr. Lamb makes the motion. 
Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Hurt. Other uh, discussions or questions? If not, all in favor? All were in favor. Just insert the real figure. We'll get it. Uh, e is, I'm sorry, where am I at now? D. Approve the BG5 for the Garrett Middle School Roof Project. Last uh, month, you all uh, approved the BG4 for this. This BG5 will close it out and put us in a spot where we can seek the uh, residual funds back from KDE. This is just closing out the project. I have a motion to uh, approve the BG5 for the Garrett Mr. Hurd. Mr. Hurt made motion. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. And then the second was. I'll Brother second. Jerry. Give me a little time there, Brother Jerry. <laughs> yes. All right. Further discussions on this? All in favor? No, there's not going to be. Okay, all word in favor. Um, e is to approve the pay application for the Garrett Middle School exterior door project, Mr. Tall. So Schiller has completed $5,535 worth of work. That's what they have uh, applied for. My recommendation is you approve that pay application for Schiller for the work completed. Um, is the Mr. The principal? I'm sorry? Who's the, is Jim that, Freeman? Yeah, Mr. Freeman. Uh -huh. Is he here? Is he on? Is he watching this or Brad Abbey? Brad this is. Right? Yes. Okay. We've checked each time that we've had a pay application to confirm. Okay. We have a motion to approve the pay application for the exterior door project at the middle school. So moved. Dr. Lamb makes the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. McQuarrie. Other discussion? All in favor? All were in favor. And F is to approve the pay application for the CDR canopy project. Oh, ma'am, construction has requested payment of $63,310.50 for work completed on the CDR canopy project. And uh, I would recommend the approval of your pay application for momentum construction for the work completed. Okay, you, uh, you've heard the recommendation from our superintendent. Um, I have a motion to approve the pay application for the CDR canopy project. So moved. Brother Jerry. And do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. McQuarrie. Further discussion? All in favor? All were in favor. And G has approved the 2021-22 school calendar. So board policy required a discussion session, which we had on Monday. Now a request of you to adopt the, the calendar so that we can release that calendar moving forward. I would recommend the adoption of the calendar as we presented it on Monday for the 2021-2022 school year. You heard the recommendation uh, to approve the 2021-22 school calendar uh, presented by uh, our committee and Mr. Bowen. Do I have a motion to approve that calendar? I make a motion to approve the calendar. Dr. Lamb, and second by, second? Do second. I have a, second, brother, brother Jerry. Other comments? Questions? All in favor? All were in favor. And H is to approve the agreement for the use of the gyms for Parks and Recreation League. And that's simply what it is. We've created an agreement that we'll share with the city if you all approve it, that requires them to adhere to the, the guidelines that we've set forth for them. I would recommend that you approve this agreement. You heard a recommendation to approve this uh, rec Parks and Recreation League agreement. Do I have a motion to agree to approve it? I'll make the motion. Mr. McCrory makes the motion. And do I have a second? Second. Oh. Mr. Hurt. Other discussions or questions? All in favor? All were in favor. Okay, we're coming to adjournment.
Mr. Woods, before we adjourn, if we could, a uh, couple of quick announcements. Number one, the cost was $66,640, which was under the 69.9. Uh, so I apologize, I didn't have that for you. I appreciate Stacy grabbing that for us. Thank you, Stacy. Um, also want to remind the board that next month, uh, your work session is actually on a Tuesday, not on a Monday because of a holiday. Of course, we'll remind you of that. And then the other announcement that I would like to make with permission of the board is to take a moment to recognize Mr. Woods as he finishes his time with us uh, here in Gary County. Uh, Mr. Woods, we know you spent a great deal of time uh, supporting the school district, great deal of time being at meetings like this, uh, a great deal of time thinking through projects and processes. We appreciate the amount of time that you put in. We hope you have some great time with your family as you leave and uh, get to experience that. And on behalf of the board, uh, I kind of wore the word time out, and maybe that'll make sense here in a second. The board would like to present you with this. And I hope most of the people out there can see it from your camera. Do I need to take it out? Yeah, it'd be good if you did, so that everybody understands why we talk about time. <laughs> I see that. I'll, I'll do that later. And I'll do this now. Oh, thank you. That's really nice. I will read that for the years of service to the Gary County Schools and the Gary County Board of Education from 2013 to 2020. I appreciate that very much, board, and whoever's watching there. Um, yeah, I'm going to, can I just say a few words? Uh, just, You're the chairman still. <laughs> no, I guess you can. I'm getting ready to not be the chairman. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, first of all, but I want to wish uh, Miss Davis the best of uh, the luck. I, that's not really the right word, but maybe her uh, experience will be blessed because I've been blessed in my life. And this is my last farewell to public education. I have made a decision to fully retire from all public education. And I, I was counting the day, I was thinking through this, I'm a thinker. I've had about 45 years of public education, and, and I started, and Trish can tell you that, I was working like custodian at Lancaster Elementary as a high school senior. And then uh, over the years, I've been a, a teacher and a coach and 21 years of administration and worked two years for KSBA and I, I've had 45 years, eight years as a board member and and I, I think I've, I've been in every position that you can come up with <clears throat> and, uh, in schools. Uh, if you ever need a sub driver, I still have my CDLs. <laughs> I've done that. Uh, I was thinking the other day, I'd make this kind of funny. Uh, maybe I haven't been a nurse, but I probably have taped, coached, thousands of ankles and knees and I can do that pretty well, you know. So anyway, you know, it, it, this is kind of bittersweet, but at the same time, I'm looking forward to my time. I really am. And, and my wife and I, I, in the fall, I had, we had in our family, we had some strenuous, strenuous uh, variables or occurrences that happened that made the Lord give me insights that there's other things that he wants me to do in life. Amen. And that's what uh, I'm really focused on. I've shared some of that with Jerry and uh, I'm really, my heart's moving in that direction. And uh, I really want to uh, tell you all, I appreciate your friendship. Uh, you know, over the years that I've been on this board, um, there have been times we disagreed and times we've laughed, but uh, Everything that I've ever done as a board member has been for the kids. And if you if you go back to 45 years, I've been in six school districts. I, I've touched a lot of kids in a lot of counties, and I can just if I can just that's what my whole life has been. If I could if I can get my kids to be better, that's all that matters to me. And I know that you all have the same thoughts and feelings and so forth. And it's nice to retire back in my home county. And I will be on the farm. I invite principals, if you're still out there, 
please come to my farm. I'll take you as a field trip. I'll teach chemistry mm -hmm. while you're out there. I'll teach mm -hmm. what math, whatever you want. <laughs> uh, I open the doors to to our kids. Thank you so much and appreciate you got one more action. Huh? You got one more action. Oh. You gotta do the adjournment. Okay, I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I'll second. All in favor, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Woods. Thank you, whoever that was. Thank you, Mr. Woods. Appreciate it. Tracy. I'll come out there with a the buzz load and just drop them off.
Mr. Moth, thanks for being with us. Uh, you're gonna take care of the uh, swearing in of the three board members who were elected back in November. Two of them will be uh, a re-swear, I guess, and the other one is a new one for us. So Mr. Moss, we'll turn it over to you and, and let you lead us through this process. All right, we have a constitutional oath uh, that I will repeat and have you repeat back. Now we need to do it. Do you all wanna do this three different individual times or would you prefer to just do everybody at once? I prefer everybody at once. All right. Everybody that okay with everybody else? That's good. That's good. All right. I will uh um I will try to keep the uh the portions small so that we don't get too far ahead, but I would ask each of the three of you, uh Mr. Hurt, Miss Davis, and Mr. and Doctor, excuse me, Dr. Browning, <laughs> to please raise your right hand. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That, that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth and the Constitution of this Commonwealth and be faithful and true and be faithful and true to the Commonwealth of Kentucky to the Commonwealth of Kentucky. So long as I continue a citizen thereof. So long as I continue to be a citizen thereof. And that I will faithfully execute. And that I will faithfully execute. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. The office of member of the Gary County Board of Education. The office of member of the Gary County Board of Education. According to law. According to, According to law. law. And I do further solemnly swear. And I do further solemnly swear. That since the adoption of this present constitution. That since the adoption of this present constitution. I being a citizen of this state. I and being a citizen of this state. Have not fought a duel with deadly weapons. Have not they do within this state nor out of it. Within this state, this state nor out, out of it. it. Nor have I sent or accepted a challenge. Nor have I have sent, sent or accepted a challenge to fight a duel with deadly weapons. To, to fight, fight a duel with deadly, with deadly weapons. weapons. Nor have I acted. Nor have I acted. As a second in carrying a challenge, as a second in a challenge, nor aided or assisted, nor aided or assisted any person thus offending, any person thus offending. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, you all have been officially sworn in as new members uh, or repeating or new members of the Gary County Board of Education. Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank Jeff. Thank you all. Appreciate, appreciate being honored. I've got connections with all three of you and very, uh, very <laughs> fond of all of you. I appreciate, I appreciate uh, your all's willingness to serve. And uh, Mr. Stoll, I'll send you a text about getting the paperwork on my end. I think there's some paperwork maybe on your end too, but we can work that out. We've uh, handled the paperwork on our end. So okay. we will be good to go on that. So once yours is done, I think we'll be good to go. Judge Moss, we appreciate you being willing to step up and take care of this for us tonight. Welcome all three of the board members back to the board or to the board for the first time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you to all of you. Has Larry left, uh, Mr. Stoll? I believe he's out in the hallway. Okay, well, I haven't seen him and I just wanted to thank him for his service and so maybe you can share that with him. I followed him as supervisor. Now I'll be following him as board member. Yeah. <laughs> he wished you the best of luck in your new role uh, yes. as he was tying up uh, the end of the meeting previously. I heard, sure I heard that. that. But you can't limit me to words now. You know that. Well, that's <laughs> why I can certainly tell Chris to mute you. And that will be the beauty of me. So. Not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome on board. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. We'll be closing out the meeting now. All right. Thank, Thank you. Have a good evening. All right. Thank, Thank you all. You all.